The story begins with our main protagonist, called Tanaka Kuen, laying under a tree. His best friend, pretty much his caretaker, is called Uta. He asks what Tanaka is doing out here, to which he bleakly says, the weather has a nice cool breeze today, and the birds are chirping with their cute voices. I think the people of the modern generation are forgetting the wonders that nature offers. Don't you think it's a waste to not feel it with your entire body like this? Uta just stares at him. The following day, Uta has to carry Tanaka into class. One of their classmates, called Kato, thanks Uta for picking up Tanaka while placing him at his seat. A few moments later, Tanaka wakes up, confused about how he's back at his desk, but quietly says thanks again to Uta. Another one of their classmates, called Chimura, asks why he doesn't use his own two legs for once, but another guy says he can't help it, it's just Tanaka. At the end of class, Uta pokes Tanaka on the arm, and he shakes vigorously. It turns out when he sleeps with his head on the desk, his arms fall asleep and he can't move them. In the next period, Tanaka finishes his worksheet super fast so he can doze off, but complains that since he moved his desk, people are blocking the breeze. Uta thought Tanaka could drift off anywhere, but today he can't relax for some reason. He wonders if it's because he's not in his usual place, and maybe the little differences seem bigger. The guilt of knowing how lazy he is begins to get to him as students in the other classes are studying hard. He wants to savor that feeling. A classmate asks Suda if he can copy his notes, so he excuses himself. Meanwhile, the students who were blocking the breeze move in. Tanaka sees this as a golden opportunity to do some dozing, however, he ends up falling off his chair. The next period is P.E., and Uda's surprised that Tanaka is actually willing to participate. Tanaka says he wants to build his physical strength so his limbs won't fall asleep or get hurt. No matter how lazy he is, his goal is to work his body hard so that he can slack off worry-free. Uda thinks that's a tad contradictory but sees his point. Today they play badminton but start off with some basic stretches, but to no one's surprise, Tanaka is already struggling. The teacher warns him not to take breaks during warm-up exercises. When it's time for badminton, Tanaka and Uta face Kato and Mira, who are confident they will win, but one of them remarks how Uta is visually intimidating. On the first serve, Tanaka goes to hit the shuttle back but ends up launching the bat at his classmates, who scold him for it. So he takes a break. Two girls called Kitchen and Shirashi comment, saying it looks like the boys are having fun. On the other hand, Uta wins the badminton match even though it's against two opponents. Tanaka wonders if Uta's performance will automatically count towards his grade since they're on the same team. Even though he's been resting since Tanaka, quote unquote, worked so hard, he's hungrier than usual. After getting their lunch, they eat on the field where Uta says, you shouldn't make a habit of resting your chin on your hand as it can lead to joint disorders. Developing physical strength is fine, but you should fix your bad habits first. Suddenly, Tanaka begins bleeding out of his mouth. Uta becomes very worried, however, he reveals that a piece of French bread stabbed the inside of his mouth, and after all, he wasn't really hungry, so Uta eats the rest for him. After school, Tanaka articulates that instead of getting rid of numbness and pain, maybe coexisting with them is the true answer. He also expresses that having an unwavering mind and the ability not to care is what's important, not physical strength. While passing a bookstore, Tanaka sees something that catches his eye, in the story known as life, everyone can become a main character. However, Tanaka says he doesn't even want to be the main character in his own life, as it sounds exhausting. While walking in the park, a boy goes up to Uta and asks him to get his ball that got stuck in a tree, and being the kind guy he is, Uta gets it for him, gaining the attention of some girls passing by. Tanaka takes note of this. The next day at school, Uta notices Tanaka is doubly listless. A classmate asks him to help carry some worksheets to the faculty room, but he even needs Uta to help him with that. At lunch, Tanaka doesn't seem to want anything to eat. Buddha offers him some of his food as he's worried Tanaka's listlessness is worse from lack of appetite. In music class, Tanaka plays the piano, which surprises his classmates. Buddha tells them he used to take lessons as a kid. After a beautiful choir song, Tanaka rests on the piano. But when a girl goes to see if he's okay, he makes a loud screech, startling the whole class. Buddha chats with Kato and Shimura regarding Tanaka's listlessness. Today, Shimura theorizes that his lack of appetite, coupled with his absent-mindedness and inexplicable behavior like that sudden screech, means love is the issue. Who defines Tanaka alone in a classroom and offers to go get ice cream to make him feel better. However, he declines, so Uta just drags him anyway, making all his stuff fall out of his pocket. Uta notices he has about 15 different reminders telling him to go to the dentist. At this moment, Buddha realizes the reason he's been doubly listless is because of a toothache, not love. 
So, without hesitating, he carries Tanaka to the dentist. After getting an anesthetic at the dentist, Uta asks if Tanaka is in love with anyone, but he says no. Tanaka then promises himself he'll have teeth so healthy they won't lose to cavity-causing bacteria. Buddha sees how Tanaka will go to great lengths to be listless and that his passion for it is real. Tanaka ends up falling asleep on the bench, and Uta carries him home. We then see a mysterious girl who had been spying on them. The following day, Tanaka and Uta are approached by the girl who was spying on them yesterday. She begs Tanaka to make her his apprentice, much to their surprise, as none of them know her. She introduces herself as Miyano and tells Tanaka's classmate that she wants to become a mature woman by attaining Tanaka's level of listlessness, begging him to teach her. Tanaka asks her to please leave as he doesn't take apprentices and doesn't want new developments in his life. However, Miyano is still overly keen to be Tanaka's friend. So he says just for today, as turning her down would probably take more effort. In class, Miyano observes Tanaka's body language and eyes, but when she tries to copy him, it goes all wrong. The teacher asks what's wrong with her, to which she becomes frustrated and cries out, I failed. After class, Uta shows Tanaka his half-price donut coupon, which is valid for three people as Miyano's close by listening. Uta asks her if she wants to go with them after school. She tries her best not to show her excitement, but it doesn't go too well. Uta then carries Tanaka to the cafeteria as his stomach is loudly rumbling, he knows he's too lazy to walk himself. After lunch, Tanaka gets a green tea from the vending machine. Uta pops out from around the corner and asks if she'd like to buy something, as he can press the button for her if she can't reach. She accepts and says, I'll have a green tea, even though strawberry milk is her favorite. Uta goes for a strawberry milk, which gobsmacks Miano, who is trying to be all grown up. She starts crying. Uta gives his strawberry milk to Tanaka, who drinks it to show Miano he likes it too. Still upset with herself, Miano runs off to the library where she finds a book called The Secret to Listlessness. She studies hard and comes back later to Tanaka with a research report on listlessness. Tanaka nonchalantly says, I don't get it, sending Miyano into a state of despair. Uta tells Tanaka not to brush her off so harshly, but he goes on and explains to Miyano that being listless may not be for her and thinks her hardworking nature is why it isn't working out. However, he also expresses that this is what he thinks is so great about her, so there's no need for her to go out of her way to be like him. Miyano then reveals there's someone she likes and wants to be the perfect girl for them. Tanaka tells her that if this person accepts you for who you are, then it doesn't matter if you're perfect or not, and that they probably prefer the way she is now. Miyano becomes happy again after hearing his kind words and takes his advice. Then they all go for donuts as planned. The next day, Uta finds Tanaka as he wants to show him something. It turns out Miyano has mastered the art of listlessness, confusing them both as yesterday she seemed to take their advice. Uta thinks maybe she was rejected by the person she likes. Tanaka says, in any case, maybe it's better to leave her be. Later, Tanaka and Uta spy on Miyano as Uta planted a strawberry milk to see if she would drink it. However, she walks off without taking a single sip, and the two determine that she's no longer the Miyano they once knew. A little while later, Uta says, if Miyano changed because she wanted to, we can't do anything. It's kind of sad, but we should just be happy for her. While following Miyano, Tanaka stops her from walking into fresh paint, and all of a sudden, she has a eureka moment. Miyano explains that so many mascots are beginning to appear on TV that she thought they were androids and no one's actually in them. Thus, in her wild imagination, the android mascots would become conscious and start revolting against humanity. She became so scared that she couldn't sleep at night and thought she was the only one who could save the Earth. However, after thinking for some time, she knows it's probably someone short like her in the suit. Uta is dumbfounded how her whole personality changed because of this ridiculous fantasy, but nevertheless, they're glad she's back to her usual self. The following morning, Tanaka finds a note on his shoe locker which reads, Letter of Challenge, and as it turns out, it's from a girl called Atchison who wants to fight him. She is shocked after realizing that Uta is with him as they used to be in the same gang. Uta reveals that Atchison is his next-door neighbor, and they've known each other since kindergarten. Tanaka asks, such as in why she wants to fight him, to which she replies, I need to find out what kind of person you are. Tanaka says it won't be much of a fight as he's confident he'd lose, and Uta notes that listlessness even diminishes the opponent's will to fight since Tanaka won't fight Atchison. She suggests a board game to which he accepts. Atchison wins, but still feels like she lost for some reason. A little while later, she scolds Tanaka. She thought he was someone remarkable pretending to be listless and that she can't believe her best friend wants to be like him. 
Tanaka is confused as ever, but then Miyano appears, and it all makes sense as he realizes the two are actually friends. Miyano asks what they were doing up here with Achison and informs her that she was just having a match with Tanaka, but he was so weak it wasn't even a challenge. Miyano jumps to his defense, telling her that he is actually amazing, and she doesn't realize Tanaka's true power, causing Achison to demand a rematch. Later in class, Tanaka finds another letter challenge on his desk. Butz informs him that Atchison isn't the type to give up until she sees things through. A few moments later, we see Miyano very upset with Atchison, and as she runs away from her, Tanaka then appears and Atchison grabs him. She explains that a few days ago, Miyano gave her a homemade cookie, but it was so cute she couldn't eat it, and before she knew it, mold started to grow on it. Miyano found out and got so angry she wouldn't listen to her reason. Tanaka asks why she didn't just take a picture, but Atchison reveals she doesn't have a phone. Meanwhile, Uta finds a troubled Miyano in a classroom and explains why she's so mad. Uta agrees that she has the right to be angry, as a homemade cookie is never to be wasted. Atchison hides behind Tanaka to try and make amends with Miyano, but she's still giving her the cold shoulder. Frustrated, Atchison asks Tanaka why Miyano wanted to be his apprentice, and he tells her that it's because she likes someone, which stumps her. She's hurt Miyano wouldn't tell her such a thing, seeing as they're friends. Meanwhile, Miyano is hiding around the corner, eavesdropping. She comes out and says she's seriously angry, as she did her best to make the cookie swatches and would like it because she loves her. Atchison realizes she was wrong, and from now on she'll eat everything Miyano gives her. Tanaka then informs you that all this time, Miyano's matches were for the person she liked. The following day, Miyano surprises everyone with some more homemade treats, but this time she didn't make them cute as Atchison can't eat cute things. Atchison has no problem devouring it, but Uta says in his head, this is kinda hard to eat, since Atchison and Miyano made up. Tanaka assumes this means she doesn't need to be his apprentice anymore, but to his surprise, she still wants him to teach her the secrets of listlessness. A few moments later, Shiraishi trips over, and Uta helps her up. Tanaka asks who she is, and Uta says, you really have no interest in your classmates. He goes on to explain that she's their class representative, she gets top grades and is very courteous. Also, she's rumored to have very devoted bodyguards. Tanaka and Uta help Shiraishi collect her papers and take them to the copy room. After Shiraishi prints some test papers, Tanaka accidentally presses the button, printing another, and after feeling its warmth, he figures warm papers would be amazing as a pillow. After eating a delicious snack from the kind and bubbly Shiraishi, Tanaka gets tired, so Uta takes him home, and Shiraishi thanks them for helping her today. After they leave, we see a completely different side of her. She freezes and then celebrates as she's alone at last. She takes her contacts out that no one knew she had, adjusts her skirt along with her hair, and puts her glasses on. We then find out that in middle school, she never fit in because she was awkward, too serious, and unfashionable. So, just before high school came around, she promised herself to change. Her high school debut was a success as she got everyone's attention, but in truth, the contacts hurt her eyes, and she felt uncomfortable in a short skirt. She swore she'd have a glamorous student life in high school, but she's not sure how much longer she can keep up this facade. A few moments later, Uta walks back in with Tanaka and sees Shiraishi in her true self. He stands there, stunned for a moment, and then casually collects his bag and leaves like he didn't see anything. On the other hand, Shiraishi is freaking out. The next day, she's afraid to go into class in case everyone found out about yesterday, but it looks like nobody knows apart from Uta, who comes strolling along with Tanaka. Uta and Tanaka head into class where Shimura asks how it went with Shiraishi yesterday. Meanwhile, she's just outside eavesdropping as she wonders when her true nature will be exposed. However, she only hears good things from Uta. In science class, Tanaka suggests to Shursher to do something with his long hair to stop it from getting in the chemicals, so he styles it how Shiraishi does hers when she's alone. Shiraishi thinks they're mocking her. At lunch, she spies on them while hanging out with Kato and Shimura. It looks like Uta is about to expose her, but instead, he covers for her like the kind gentleman he is. Shiraishi is relieved, but later it's evident she knows that it's physically impossible to maintain this facade. After walking past Kato and Shimura in the hallway, she becomes ecstatic as she can finally be her comfortable self in school without anyone noticing her. However, she celebrates a little too early, as she didn't fool Tanaka who notices it's her. She stops dead in her tracks after Tanaka calls her name and then explains to them that the popular shirshir they see in class every day is the ideal version of her, which she worked very hard to create. However, she thinks the real her is plain, dull, and has no friends. Even though it's exhausting, she wanted to shine. 
Tanaka tells her that she is truly admirable and her real self is ten times more attractive than him in every way. Uda says hiding all your efforts from others isn't something everyone can do and advises her to have more confidence in herself. After their talk, Shiraishi asks if they could still keep it a secret, to which they have no problem agreeing. The next day, Shiraishi comes to school wearing her glasses, surprising her classmates. Uda asks how Tanaka spotted her when she looked so different, and he says a girl can cover up her looks, but she can't hide her chest size. Uda says, you'd better not ever tell her that. Please comment down below for part 2, and don't forget to subscribe and until the next adventure my fellow legends.